Hi everyone, welcome to Dentizen. Today we are going to talk about a sinus. Sinus means a cavity or a space. Where is it? this space present inside the maxillary bone so it is called maxillary sinus so one on each side and that is the topic for today's video so let's start before starting quickly subscribe to dental zen and also give a like to this video as i keep making such interesting videos for you so we are going to talk about its definition its development its structure that is size and shape then its histology which can be an important short note that how it appears under the microscope then functions that can be another important short note and then the developmental anomalies what can go wrong with its development and then very very important its clinical significance for us dentists why it is so important so let's start so it is present around the nasal cavity so it is called para nasal sinus para means around nasal means nose but it is not the only one there are four para nasal sinuses what are those one is maxillary one is frontal that is inside the frontal bone ethmoidal inside the ethmoidal bone and sphenoidal inside the sphenoid bone and that is your viva question what are the four para nasal sinuses now which one is the largest out of these four yes it is our maxillary sinus which is the largest and that can be your another viva question the largest para nasal sinus is maxillary sinus you know the third important I have a question that is coming is what is the other name for this maxillary sinus so another name is also called maxillary entrum and another special name that is given to is the sinus is mag entrum of hymor that is very popular viva question after the name of the person nathaniel hymor which who described this sinus for the first time so those are your viva questions now let's talk about its definition that is divided into three parts first what it is it is a space but what type of space it is a pneumatic space pneumatic means it is filled with air it contains air second part where it is placed inside the body of the maxilla maxilla but inside its body it has maxillary bone has various processes but this sinus is present in the body in the central part of the maxilla then third part is how it communicates with the exterior with the outside if there is anything inside the sinus how it will come out so for that it needs a communication so it communicates with the outside through an opening which is in the nasal cavity lateral wall so that is within the lateral wall of the nose there are further bony projections three projections as we can see here this is superior concha middle concha and inferior concha and beneath these concave these bony projections there are spaces which are called meters superior meters middle meters and inferior meters and this maxillary sinus opens here in the middle meters so that is where it is opening so that is the third part of the definition that it communicates with the environment by middle nasal meters so that is the definition it is a pneumatic space inside the body of maxilla and communicates with middle nasal meters now let's see its development so its development starts when first there is fusion of the horizontal palatine shells these fuse with each other and also with the nasal septum with that fusion what happens oral cavity gets separated from the nasal cavity oral cavity when there are no teeth initially so nasal cavity gets separated and now it will further expand so lateral wall of the nose further expands begins folding and that is how the three conchae are formed that is superior middle and inferior bony projections and below that are nasal meatus is superior middle and inferior meatus and it is the middle meatus which further expands into the lateral wall of the nose and in the inferior direction and that is when the maxillary sinus starts developing and after that it grows in the lateral direction and then it will grow in the inferior direction so let's see the timeline so it is the first paranasal sinus to develop and at, it begins forming at second month of intrauterine life so at birth its size its volume is 6 to 8 cm cube in anterior posterior direction and after birth its growth happens in two phases that is biphasic first is 0 to 3 years and second is 7 to 12 years so by the end of 4 years by the age of 4 years it extends lateral that is the first phase and second is by the age of nine years it is expanding inferiorly closing close to the hard palate so it comes to reach hard palate here and it comes very close to posterior maxillary teeth and that is why it is important for us and now it becomes ovoid shape so in adults its volume is 15 centimeter cube and it keeps on expanding till the eruption of all the permanent teeth now let's talk about its structure Do you, we if we look at the sinus we think it is triangular but if we look at it in three dimensions all the dimensions it is actually a pyramidal structure and that to four-sided pyramid very very important by the question shape of sinus maxillary sinus pyramidal and four-sided pyramid that means it has a base as we can see here it has a base that is towards the lateral wall of the nose then it has an apex that is towards the zygomatic process of maxilla and then there are four sides that is the superior side that is towards the orbital surface inferior side that is towards the alveolar processes then anterior side which is towards the front in the body of the maxilla facial surface of the maxilla and the posterior side which is towards the infratemporal surface of maxilla so if we open this apex from here the, of the pyramid from here we can see that there is a base and there are four sides superior side inferior side anterior and posterior sides so let's see how to describe so base is the formed by the nasal surface of the body of the maxilla as we can see and it is the thinnest of all 
called the sides and also within this side there is opening of sinus or which is also called ostium which is called hiatus semilunaris so this opening is in the hiatus semilunaris that is crescent shaped structure in the middle meatus so that is your viva question where is the opening and if you look at the opening its level is actually higher than the floor of the sinus this is called floor which is towards the alveolar processes so what do you think if there are any infection of the sinus it is very difficult to drain the secretions out of this sinus because of the level of the opening in relation to the level of the floor of the sinus then its apex is towards the zygomatic process of maxilla superior side which is also called the roof of the sinus roof is towards the orbital surface floor of the orbit then inferior side which is also called the floor of the sinus that is towards the maxillary alveolar process and towards the zygomatic process of maxilla then the anterior side is towards the facial surface of the body of the maxilla towards the front and the posterior side is towards the infratemporal surface of maxilla that is in the back side so we can say all the sides are within the maxilla and towards its processes towards its sides so that is base apex and the four sides now there are recesses what are recesses there is further expansion of the sinus beyond its normal limits that is it keeps on expanding into the processes of maxilla like it can expand into the alveolar process of maxilla into the zygomatic into the frontal and into the palatine processes so they are called recesses most commonly seen in alveolar process which is known as alveolar recess now talking about the relationship of the floor of the sinus with the maxillary teeth as we just said it is very close to maxillary teeth so which tooth do you think is the closest to the floor of the sinus and that is your viva question so it is the maxillary first molar which is the closest followed by second premolar then the first premolar and then comes the second molar so that is very important viva question that is the order that you have to remember the tooth closest to the floor of the sinus is first maxillary molar now if we talk about its size we can give it in three dimensions first is in the anterior posterior direction from the anterior from front to backward side it is 34 millimeter superior inferiorly that is from above to below it is 33 millimeters and then laterally that is mediolaterally it is about 23 millimeters so that is the shape and the size now let's talk about the blood supply it is by the branches of maxillary artery it is inside the maxillary bone branches is maxillary artery supply the arterial supply venous drainage into two facial vein and pterygoid plexus of vein very important which has communications with the cavernous sinus through mystery vein so any infections of the maxillary sinus can actually go to cavernous sinus and can be life-threatening then talking about lymphatic drainage that is into the submandibular lymph nodes and nerve supply to supply is parasympathetic for secretions is through greater petrosal nerve branch of facial nerve and then sensory is through the branches of the maxillary nerve now let's talk about the histology which can be another important short note for you so histology sinus cavity is lined by a soft tissue as we can see here this red layer so this soft tissue is called mucosa and this mucous membrane of this maxillary sinus is given a special name it is called schneiderian membrane that can be your important viva question and this lining this membrane is attached to the underlying periosteum of the bone maxillary bone so this type of attachment this type of mucosa is called mucoperiosteum because it is tightly bound to periosteum of the maxillary bone and if we cut this lining and we see it under the microscope it further has three layers so first on the top is epithelial layer and below that is sub epithelial layer and in between the two is basal lamina so let's see how we draw these layers so this is epithelial layer with basal lamina below that is sub epithelial layer containing glands here and below that is the bone of the maxillary bone so now we are drawing the cells nuclei of the glands nuclei of the cells of the epithelium then the these glands are placed in connective tissue with collagen fibers fibroblast blood vessels this periosteum now so now we label it as epithelium below that is basal lamina which separates it from the connective tissue which contains the sub epithelial glands then there is bone with the periosteum then there is cilia which are present in the epithelial cells and goblet cells empty looking cells so now why this is called pseudo stratified epithelium pseudo means false stratified means layers so this epithelium gives a false appearance of multiple layers because some cells are tall and some cells are short but actually it is a single layer only that is why it is called pseudo stratified ciliated because cilia are present and columnar because shape of the cells is columnar so it is derived from the olfactory epithelium epithelium of the nose which is and it is a type of similar to respiratory epithelium pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium now within this epithelium there are different types of cells so the most common ones are the columnar as we have seen here so ciliated columnar cell most numerous apart from that there are columnar cells which are non-ciliated which do not have cilia then there are basal cells which shorter cells which divide to form new cells and then there are special types of cells empty looking cells which are called goblet cells so they are flask shaped cells as we can see here and these cells they have microvilli on the top and these cells in HNE staining section they appear empty so these cells in their basal part they have nuclei and along with that there is rough endoplasmic reticulum which forms proteins which are transferred to Golgi apparatus which packages it and forms secretory granules 
so it is flask shaped cell with microvilli and appears empty then we can have transient immune cells which may come and can serve the defense function so these goblet cells what is their function their function is formation of mucus so they produce mucus which is stored in granules which are called zymogenic granules and these granules are secreted into the lumen of the sinus into the lumen of the sinus with the process called exocytosis so when these secretions are there so what is the role of cilia now these cilia which are present on columnar cells they are nine plus one arrangement and they help in the movement of these secretions out of the lumen of the sinus so that is the function now talking about the sub epithelial layer what does it contain it contains glands which have both serous cells and mucus cells also myoepithelial cells so both cells are there so they have mixed secretions and these secretions how do they reach the lumen with the help of the ducts which are called excretory ducts and apart from that this connective tissue surrounding these glands will have nerve exons blood capillaries fibroblasts fibrocyte cells and collagen fiber bundles so that is the histology three layers epithelial layer sub epithelial layer and in between to the basal lamina so that is the lining epithelium now let's talk about the functions so now this maxillary sinus it humidifies and warms the air which is taken in so humidification and warming of inspired air either they can be written as two separate function or one function then it also contributes to olfaction that is sense of smell then third is it protects the brain against exposure to cold air by arresting air in sinus temporarily when air comes inside it's stays in the sinus for some time it becomes warm and then it is pro proceed it pro proceeds further so it protects the brain against exposure to cold air then it provides resonance to voice if the sinus is not there our voice will be different so it helps in speech then it pro lightens the skull weight just imagine if the skull is like made up of all the bones there is no cavity inside it it will be heavier but small cavity inside it will make it lighter so it lightens the weight of the skull then it enhances the facio-cranial resistance to mechanical shock because of its arrangement and structure it provides resistance to shock and then it provides defense function because it produces lysozyme its lining produces bactericidal enzyme to the nasal cavity so those are the functions that you have to remember humidification and warming olfaction protects brain resonance lightening of skull facio cranial resistance and defense now let's talk about the developmental anomalies sometimes there is complete absence of sinus that is called agenesis when it does not develop there can be aplasia altered development that is altered development of sinus then hypoplasia under development small size sinus then supernumerary super means more numerary means number so when there is more than one sinus present on one side so two completely separated sinus on same side then sinuses may be of larger volume in conditions called pituitary jagentism they can be of smaller size in congenital infections like syphilis when the sinus remains small in size now talking about the functional importance clinical significance very important for us for dentists let's divide this into four parts so the first part as the sinus is very close to the mouth to the teeth so any infections of the mouth or the teeth can go to the sinus and any infection of sinus can come to the mouth so that is the first point that is transfer of infections transfer of pathology from x-ray sinus to orodental apparatus or vice versa via blood vessels or lymphatics apart from that because sinus has communications with the pterygoid plexus or vein which communicates with cavernous sinus so any infection of the maxillary sinus can go to cavernous sinus and can be life-threatening now when there is inflammation of the sinus due to infection it is called sinusitis so chronic sinusitis sinusitis if there is there it, it is there it can mimic the dental pain that is its pain can come in the posterior maxillary teeth patient may come to you with pain in the teeth but when you look inside there is no source of infection no reason for pain in the tooth then you have to think about the sinusitis so that is important then that is the first thing that is infection second thing is because these maxillary first molars they are lying very close to the floor of the sinus so if there is any surgical manipulation of these teeth that can lead to breakage of the bone between the sinus and the tooth so this bone this bone may break and what can it lead to it can lead to communication between the sinus and the mouth so this oral cavity directly communicates with sinus and this is known as orodental fistula very important viva question now this can also arise when there is any other pathology like there is any radicular cyst any granuloma or any abscess of the these maxillary posterior teeth which you will discuss in oral pathology so these also can cause the 
breaking of this bone and development of oroandral fistula so this fistula should be treated if it is left untreated what will happen this lumen will get epithelialized there can be formation of epithelial lining and it may become a permanent connection between the sinus and the mouth and that can be a problem so that is the second thing that is oroandral fistula third thing is there can be hyper cementosis of these maxillary first molars that is excessive cementum deposition on their roots of these teeth so when we are just trying to extract this tooth maxillary first molar due to some reason we don't know it has hypersymentosis it can actually cause the fracture of the bone here close to the sinus and it can lead to perforation so what should we do it's very important we should take a radiograph whenever we are extracting any maxillary posterior teeth so that we can see the relationship between the teeth and the sinus floor that is whether it is very close to sinus or it is far so that radiograph should always be done while extracting the maxillary posterior teeth then the last one is if there is any malignant tumor of the sinus there is proliferation of the lining epithelial cells these can come also into the jaws in near the teeth and can cause loosening of the teeth gingival bleeding that can lead to erroneous diagnosis and treatment you might be thinking that problem is inside the mouth within the teeth but actual problem is in the sinus that is malignancy of the sinus so those are the four important clinical significance first is the transfer of infection second is oroenteral fistula third is perforation due to hypersymentosis and fourth is malignancy now let's summarize so malign maxillary sinus is the largest paranasal sinus its definition it is a pneumatic space in the body of maxilla communicates with middle nasal meters development it is the first paranasal sinus to develop at two months of interaction life begins biphasic growth pattern that is in then in lateral and inferior direction and adults its volume is 15 centimeter cube then in the structure its shape is four-sided pyramid with base towards nasal side apex towards zygomatic process of maxilla superior or root roof is towards the orbit inferior side floor is towards the alveolar processes anterior side is towards the facial side of body of maxilla and posterior is towards the infratemporal surface and its opening is in the lateral wall of the nose in the hiatus semilunaris in the middle meatus then histology it's lined by mucosa which is called shinidarian membrane it has three layers pseudostratified ciliated columnar basal lamina and subepithelial layer containing glands its functions humidification and warming of air olfaction protects brain resonance to voice lightening of skull craniofacial resistance and lysozyme production developmental anomalies agenesis aplasia hypoplasia supernumerary sinus larger sinus in gentism and smaller in congenital syphilis then its clinical significance it can there can be transfer of infections oroenteral fistula perforation of the floor of the sinus in hypersymentosis malignancy so let's check what have you learned so because it is present around the nasal cavity what type of sinus is maxillary sinus which is the largest paranasal sinus what are the other names two other names for maxillary sinus what is the shape of this sinus where is its opening in the lateral wall of the nose which teeth are closest to the sinus type of epithelium that lines the sinus what the subepithelial layer contains and if there is a communication between the oral cavity and the maxillary sinus what it is called so that is all for this video if you really enjoyed the video do tap on the like button and share this video with your friends keep watching keep learning and keep smiling and good luck for your exam see you in the next video soon till then take care bye bye